preview player. There we go. Okay. Maybe. I Maybe. think so. It says that your event is starting. So we'll see on this Black Friday whether anyone is here. <laughs> Hey, we're trying to provide entertainment for people who are at lines. That's at right. Lossy. Because it's like Pacific, it's like nine o'clock. So it's already, you know, mm -hmm. four hours after Black Friday mm -hmm. started. Everybody should be home. And over in Sweden, they don't have Black Friday. I don't know. Do they? No, probably not. Maybe. But we might be talking to ourselves again. Yeah, we're talking to ourselves, but that's okay. We like talking to ourselves. Is it recording? Yeah. It's I sure hope it's recording. Lily is here from Hi. Mississippi. All right, Lily. Thanks for joining us on Black Friday. We've got one person in the room. <laughs> We're super excited. I don't know, actually. that This might be statistics might be backwards because it's still saying zero people in the room. But right. Lily is Good obviously here. here. And Ozcat from oh, Australia. Hey. hey, from Down Under. So real quick, Ozcat, do you hey. guys have Black Friday in Australia where everybody goes, Sh wait a second, duh. You don't have American Thanksgiving in Australia. Yes, but they might. They don't want. Do you do you have like a Black Friday, which is like the big Christmas shopping day to start off the Christmas shopping season? And the same question for you, Maria from Stockholm, Sweden. Do you have a great big Christmas shopping day that's like the start of it? Maria, Maria says they do have Black Friday, so that's today. Black Friday is today. And they can hear us because she just answered. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the Mad Mass Revolution from Yorkshire. So we have Australia, Sweden, and Yorkshire. Already. already. And Mississippi. And Mississippi and Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania already. Because everybody else is out shopping here in the United States. We went shopping yesterday. I'm sorry. I, I mean, Andy loves Thanksgiving. He hates that, that it's overlooked so much. But I needed to buy towels. <laughs> Yeah. I saved a hundred dollars on buying towels for my family. So um, you're gonna get to meet some of them later. Uh, tease, tease. Uh, but I have five kids, or we have five kids. Excuse me. I gave birth to them, so that's why I keep saying I. You know, I broke your hand while we we're doing. I was there. <laughs> anyway, so my kids. I don't know if you guys have this problem, but with five kids in the bathroom, they leave their towels all over the place. They. Um, are constantly throwing towels in the laundry after just barely wiping their hands on them. And so I want to find out who the culprit is. So now every kid has their own assigned color, and that's why I was at Black Friday yesterday for towel. <laughs> but believe it or not, I heard from the guy who was making sure I didn't take my towels too early that that's where the fights break out. Towels and sheets at Walmart. It's not the TVs. <laughs> it's you the would towels think and sheets. That everybody fights over. Yeah. And that's, so there was what, like five or six sheriff officers there. And <laughs> how many of them were over there by the towels? It, probably almost all of them. And there were shenanigans happening. It, they didn't define what shenanigans were. Oh, but I almost got kicked out. So the guy whose job was to make us not take stuff before the clock struck whatever. So I teased him. I'm like, I'm just going to organize my little pile here because you could just take the wrapping off. I'm going to organize my tiles so that when you say go, I'm going to grab them. Because I was the first one there by the pile, staking out, being all big so nobody could get the towels. <laughs> and he was like, well, go for it. So I took one of the colors that was in the box next to it and I tossed it into the box that was mine. And he was like, no, I'm going to have to kick you out. I'm like, oh, but you said I could. <laughs> So. All um, right, so we got we got a lot of people actually that showed up today. Um, Hi guys. Welcome everybody. So just on the warm up, um, click the thumbs up. Click the thumbs up, uh huh, and then share it out on share Twitter, on Facebook. Twitter, Facebook. Facebook. Let people know that yes, there are some genealogists being crazy today and having a live stream on Black Friday because I don't know about you, but I like to talk genealogy instead of just football for twenty four seven. So we're gonna we're gonna have a a little bit different live stream today. Mm -hmm. It is our behind the scenes day, but we're also going to be talking a little bit about some different family traditions or mm -hmm. things that we do for holidays. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so I want to start off with with our background. Dun, dun, dun. Maybe. 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 All right. <gasps> there we go. So do we have any Canadians in? We got I some not Sweden, seen... Ohio. Hey, Stacy. How are you? How are the kids? I think we have we have Indiana, Illinois. Uh -huh. Michigan via Florida. Okay, okay. Ohio. So we got the Midwest, like. Okay, and all California's power. in the house. We got Kirsten, Anna Karin, and Maria, all from Sweden. Nice. Hi, guys. Oscat from Australia. 
Um, who was it from Yorkshire? Billy? The Mad, the Mad Mass, Mass Revolution. The Mad Mass from Yorkshire. Yeah. yeah. And, Barb and Michigan. From Las Vegas. <laughs> hey, Stacey. Um, so there's only one football I like. That's Aggie football. Everybody else I could care less about. And, and and Stacy's from Ohio as well as there was a John, Johnstown, Ohio, but there's also a Michigan in the house. Okay, so we're talking family history. I grew up with a family of Ohio State Buckeye fans. Now, mind you, nobody went to Ohio State, but they were all raging Ohio State Buckeye fans. Except me. Well, I was raised in Texas. Come on, like, whatever. So I swore to them that I would go be a Wolverine before I'd be a Buckeye. That's Michigan for those of you that don't yeah. know the mascot. Yeah, the so, US. okay, so yes, those folks in Sweden, so they're, they're two rival teams. Think of two rival soccer teams, I'm sure, or rival Olympic teams, I don't know, rival something team. Ohio and Michigan, they don't get along. So I wanted to go to the rival team because my family liked those crazy Buckeyes. I mean, they're nuts. Literally, they're nuts. A Buckeye is a nut. So why would I want to go be a nut? I mean, my family's already crazy and anyway. So. Anyway, so tell us about this picture that we got right here oh, in the okay. background. This one. Okay, this. I need some help, you guys. What is the this? What kind of land form would you say this greenish area you is? See this, this light green area looks mm -hmm. like a pasture. Uh -huh. And then right up here is this darker green area. Uh -huh. What would you call that? Yeah. Just put it in the comments. Type what you would call that. What there. do you call this? If because you were driving along a road and you saw this green stuff, what would you call it? Because this is from Canada, from where it's your just ancestors. It's from, from, from Ontario, Canada. But that's gonna be a giveaway. Why? Okay, maybe not. How is that a giveaway? Oh, I don't know. Alrighty. Well, we gotta welcome some people, <laughs> give them a chance to say hey. So yeah, tell us what this is while while you were waiting, and we'll see. We've got oh JC. Seal from California. It says her first time here. Welcome. Hey, glad to have uh, you. Patricia from Central Texas. Adam from England. Hey, Adam. Howdy. Howdy. Well, we say howdy. What are you? I was cheerio is goodbye. I learned that the last time we were on our live stream. I don't know if they had hi in anybody <laughs> outside of Texas. I'm sorry. All right. So we got a couple of answers so oh, far. Okay. We have a ridge. A ridge. A forest. Uh huh. Um, a farmstead with a forest or on a hillside or small mountain. Yes. Foothills. And, and oh, Greg. Greg is from Ontario, Canada. Oh, hey, Greg. How are you? You might know where this is. Okay. I know. Ontario is a big place. Well, okay. So here's another. Let oh, me... sorry. I said JC. It's Jackie. Sorry. Thank you for we the correction We actually know there. a JC that's spelled that way. I don't. This was from when we lived back in, in Bryan. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome, Jackie. We're glad you could be here and join us. And, uh, and pasture, forest, or woods. Uh -huh. Sorry, everybody keeps on saying what this is. I know, but it, I was trying to make sure that Kay stays in the house because she said go bucks. Oh. So. <laughs> we might have to kick you out. Let me see right. how we can do that. <laughs> All right, so let me tell you the story. So I grew up in Texas, and I'd never been to um, Ontario, Canada. I had visited Ohio to Black Lick, Ohio, that had rolling hills and stuff like that. And I had never been to mountains until I married you. Sorry. Okay. Well. Kristen just, Kirsten just said, this is an old, overgrown volcano. <laughs> I like that. I like it. All right. So, I had been to mountains before, and I knew what a mountain was. So, we later. The Rocky Mountains. So, the we Rocky went to the Mountains. Rocky Mountains, which in the United States, they're the big ones. The big one. In the middle of a desert. So you can see them like, you can see them. Yeah. Oh, and just so you know, I'm from Houston. We don't have hills. We don't have mountains. We have overpasses. highway overpasses. That's where the freeways go and tangle up and go like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what, or, and we have ant hills. Yes. Some of those ant hills get pretty big. They do. And trash mountains. That's mm -hmm. what we have. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's the story. So in family history... I was told about a ancestor who rode a train from western, I don't know, western Ontario to eastern Ontario that just doesn't seem like it would happen. Anyway, so then it, I was told in a snowstorm she was going to help with the delivery of her sister and the young lady went um, to the train station and waited for a family and they weren't there. So she got a ride over the mountain to get to their house in the farmland of Ontario. 
So I was super excited. I was gonna go to Ontario to see this mountain. Okay, my Greg, are there mountains in Ontario? Southern Ontario. This is Southern Ontario. Okay, yes, it's on. It's called an escarpment, I believe. It's called the little from can- Niagara Falls, but where it goes up to Toronto, that little uh-huh. part of it. So it's between the two lakes, Lake Erie and Lake Michigan. Uh oh, I don't know my Ontario, Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. Mm-hmm. I don't uh-huh. know my lakes uh-huh. I know a little. I. I'm pulling this. Anyway, so if Greg's Blue Mountain, this was called an es- They called it an escarpment. The little things in escarpment. No, this is just a little hill. Just a little hill. Like you would see a hill of trees. No mountain. That is not a mountain. Yeah, when she was there, she was like looking all over for this mountain. She couldn't see it. And she asked her relatives, hey, where's this mountain that they went over? They're like, oh, that's just that right there. This right here. This right here. That was the mountain. It's, what, maybe 150 <laughs> feet tall? Uh-huh. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, it, yeah. It's so what is the lesson of today? Your takeaway, if you don't watch anything else in the live stream, your takeaway is if you have a family story and you want to call something a mountain, you better be more accurate and descriptive. So I'm sure they thought this was kind of a mountain. No, that ain't a mountain. For a flat prairie plain, that's a mountain. Yes, yes. I mean, you can actually see the hill more than you can see hills in Houston. I totally get it, but that's not a mountain. <laughs> not even close. Oh, anyway, <laughs> so that's our feature. Okay, so if you have really cool pictures you would like us to discuss in a future live stream, then just send it to us at info at Family History Fanatics, and you can be featured as our background image. Um, I'll only pick on it if you tell me to, but this is my story, which is why I picked on it. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so send those pictures to info at familyhistoryfanatics.com. They can be anything that is family history related that we will put on our live stream to focus on. So mm-hmm. you put the picture on the wrong side here. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> going in different orders. See, this is the scrapbooker in me. Oh. You'll see later how they, they actually look like they're facing in. That's the scrapbooking design tip. You always put the pictures so it's facing into the page. Well, you need to go to live stream mode next time. Okay, sure. All right. So we are celebrating Thanksgiving this week. And actually, was it last year or two years ago? I can't remember. We decided. Two years ago. We've we've done lots of different things for Thanksgiving. You know, we've made the turkey. Okay. I've done lots of different things for Thanksgiving. Let's be accurate. Made the turkey. I barbecued the the turkey. Smoked the turkey. We've had Cornish hens. We've had... Oh, he did crock pot turkey. We did he crock chopped pot it all up turkey. and put it in the crock yeah, pot. Yeah, so we've we've done lots of different turkeys over over our life, and I think. Wait, what do you? What's y'all's favorite way to cook a turkey? There you go. There's a good question for everybody to tell us about that, or for uh, <laughs> if, if those of you from from England and Australia and Sweden, if you guys have a Thanksgiving holiday or a holiday similar to that where you just gorge yourselves, tell us what that holiday yeah, is. Yeah, your big food feast. <laughs> That's all it is. It's a day to make a food feast. Okay, so he, my darling husband, he makes the food because when he married me, he knew I had no domestic goddess skills at all. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we decided last year or two years ago. I can't remember which it was. I think it was last year. I came up with the idea last year. I was tired of making turkey. And so I said, when when Devin asked what we wanted to do for Thanksgiving, he says, let's just have pizza. Because that's what her family did growing up, is they just always ordered Domino's pizza. Well, let's rephrase that. Not always. Okay. So growing up, my mom and dad did do the turkey and the ham and stuff. But they watched a sitcom, a funny show on TV, and they ordered pizza. And Domino's pizza was the first place that delivered on Thanksgiving and my family because their motto really was if you couldn't order it in nuke it in a microwave or bake it in the oven it wasn't made so we had lots of TV dinners and stuff and when Domino's could deliver on Thanksgiving that became our Thanksgiving dinner so I was like yeah pizza that's my family tradition yeah so every time somebody says bring a family recipe for a holiday meal I'm like I don't know the recipe for Domino's (laughs) So anyway, we wanted to have pizza, but we still like all the different foods that we make for Thanksgiving. And the kids were about to fight and and give me a black eye. Because they were saying, well, we got to have this and we got to have that and we got to have this. 
And I actually, the, oh, I know why we did it last year. No, it had to been two years ago. <laughs> last year, I was, I had my cancer surgery. Yeah. So we, I don't know what we did. I, I was on drugs. I don't remember. I know I'm not advocating <laughs> drugs, but they're really good when you have surgery. Anyway, so uh, two years ago, I was in charge of it because he did, he was tired of making the turkey and I'm not going to make a turkey. Um, and so I said, okay, well, let's break it up. So we started breaking it up. So one day we'd have the sweet yams. Well, not yams. Sweet potatoes. The candied sweet potatoes. That's with the marshmallows. And one day we'd have the green bean casserole. Mm -hmm. And then one day we would have the mashed potatoes and the stuffing. And so we'd break it up over several days. And then we, of course, have a lot of pie. Yeah. You know, you have to have pie pie every single day. But Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee makes all of our pies. Yeah. She's related to us. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Sarah, and for those of you who don't know it, Sarah Lee, it's a brand of pie that I could just go to the freezer and get and bake it. It's great. Because <laughs> I don't make pies either. So this was our meal. Two nights ago. Two nights ago. Mm-hmm. We had baked Bar- ham uh-huh. and green bean casserole and... Sweet yams. Yeah. Sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. Uh-huh. And then... The night before, we had chicken Caesar salad and um, mashed potatoes. And oh, then okay. on Thanksgiving Day, we had our pizza from Walmart. That's right. Thank you, Walmart. We bought it on Tuesday, though. We didn't go and buy the pizza on Thursday. Or sorry, we bought yes. it on Wednesday. We didn't no, we buy it on, on Thursday. Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever. We didn't go shopping on Thursday until after we ate our pizza. And then we finally had our pie. So Andy and I went to Black Friday, and the kids baked my Sarah Lee pie. It was great. Yeah. It was <laughs> wonderful. So let's see. We got um, Angie. She I bought a cooked chicken for this year. So you avoided the cooking altogether and just bought the cooked chicken. One year, your office gave us a cooked meal. Like all the fixings. Did they? Yeah. And they had the the, the, the turkey was all cooked up. All we had to do... I mean, it was cooked. We just had to reheat it the next day. Well, like from they, Randall's or Albertsons or something. I know they always gave us a turkey. They used to always give us a turkey. Yeah, one year we got the whole mm. thing. It was great. We got the whole thing? Mm-hmm. That would have been great. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> um, let's see. Somebody says, yeah, Stacy, she she likes ham. Oh, Patricia has Christmas spaghetti. spaghetti. I like that. Spaghetti. That sounds yummy. Mm. All right, so keep, give me the number for Domino's. <laughs> oh, Papa John's bacon pizza. Yes. From Norberto. That We did that, but... um. No, we don't have Papa John's bacon. We have Papa Murphy's, but Papa Murphy's moved 20 minutes away. 20, Is that 30 minutes. Yeah, it's pretty far. Okay, yeah, the, the ones close to us, the two two Papa Murphy's close to us, they closed down. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Our Papa John's, it's order pizza, it's not baked pizza. <laughs> so, no, hey, Papa Murphy's and Papa John's is different. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. Papa Murphy's is the, you, you, it, it was like the pizza we got from Walmart. It's right. already made, it's not frozen, you bake it at home. Yes. And Papa John's is that you order it in and they, it's already cooked. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Did anybody else have some? Um, I didn't see. I saw lots oh. more people here. We have uh, Soso. We have uh, Maria from Puerto Rico via Florida. So there's several people that obviously live in Florida from all over the place. Uh-huh. Um, okay. Good job. And then I think Linda came in from New Jersey. Hey. How are you? And let's get to some news okay. today. All right. So one of the first bits of news is a sad bit of news. So one of the things I've been doing for the past three years is I have been doing a free genealogy classes at the local library here where we live in Houston. And so I'm no longer doing that anymore. And instead, what I'm going to be doing is having, I know it's on our other channel. <laughs> so this isn't sad. This is like... Well, it's, it's good for you guys because y'all aren't any... See, I, I change between you guys and y'all because when I left Texas to go to upstate New York, I thought they would kick me out of the States because I said y'all all the time. And so, I anyway, I tried to morph to you guys. Anyway... All right, so, but y'all can access this good thing. So it's really taken a lot of time to go to the library and have small crowds, which is fine. I will teach, in one time I had one person and we had a great time. But, so now what we're gonna do is have monthly topics on our Facebook trip page and try that, would have some training. So if you have some topics you'd like me to cover as if it was like a lecture and you can attend a lecture and do something more than what we do on YouTube, we're gonna try that on Facebook for a few moments. So be sure you, um, like our Facebook page, familyhistoryfanatics.com slash familyhistoryfanatics. 
Mm-hmm. And that we're going to do once a month. I don't think we've decided on the day or the we time We haven't yet. decided a day. I want to try to get some ideas um, together. So if you guys can help me out, that would be great. You just tell me what topics. I know one person said Swedish family history, and I don't know Swedish family history. <laughs> I would love to think Swedish family history because I have a Swede in my tree, but his name is William Anderson, and that's all I know. <laughs> it's not very helpful. So that's one of our news. All right, the next one is the virtual workshop, the DNA virtual workshop that's coming up starting next week on Thursday. You can still sign up for it right now. It is $29.99 to register. Now, this is going to be a three weeks long. Um, on Thursday night, for the next three weeks, there'll be a two hour class, and then there'll be some homework from that as well. And the whole idea behind this is to be able to take maybe some of these tools that you've used and show how you can integrate them all together to further your research with DNA. Now, this is not a beginner DNA no, class. No, this is not. So if you don't know what, if you've never downloaded your DNA test and you have no idea what GEDCOM, GEDmatch is, this class is not for you. I'd rather have you take, um, we have pre-recorded webinars over on our website and we would love to have you take that instead so you can get the most value for your money. So this is for those who are ready. They, they know, they've got their stuff trans. Uh, Jed match. They've taken a DNA test. They're ready to start making. Yeah, some and I'll sense. be I'll be using examples from basically all the different websites. So if you only have tested at one of the companies, then that's fine. There's certain limitations that some companies have, um, but uh, I'm going to be touching on on all of them. So sweet. Um, yeah, you can still sign up for that if you haven't already, and if you already have signed up for it, then we will see you there. It will be recorded, so mm-hmm. you can watch each of those episodes for a year after. They are done. Awesome. And I like that um, she said it's Jackie, right? Jackie has already made some suggestions for next year's um, training. Free. These will be free classes over on Facebook, but they'll be available for a little bit of time. I forgot to say that. So brick walls and um, palatinate German speaking descendants. Got it. Viking. Mm. So that we're going to hold that question to a little bit later, the DNA question that just came in. Um, and now we're going to go to our topic of the day. All right. Our topic today it's behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is this is this nice facade that we put here. We're not really right here. <laughs> We're gonna get to that part in just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we wanted to take you and help you get to know a little bit about us because we put a lot a lot of con- content out for you and so many people say, tell me a little bit more about your family. So the first thing, um, we homeschool our five children. They have never been in public school. Um, and I don't know if they have that option in England or Sweden or Australia. Um, Canada does. <laughs> I've heard it's challenging. Um, so they do. They are homeschooled, and so this is a peek into our very messy homeschool room. Um, it's supposed to be a dining room, but we have individual desks for everybody. And because my two youngest little monkeys won't do any work unless I'm sitting in there. My desk is also in there as well. But as you can see, we have junk on the ground and I probably need some curtains, but I'm just not good at home decor. <laughs> so, and, <laughs> Unless you're wondering where we eat. So the house that we bought when we moved down here to Texas, mm-hmm. it has a breakfast nook as well, except the breakfast nook room is just, as big as the dining room mm-hmm. dining room. So right. there's no need to have, we don't have two dining room tables. Right. There's no need for that. But when we lived in Iowa, it was really great. We had a house that's like two floors, but it's split. And so on the bottom of the floor is the basement, and that's where we had our school room. So that was kind of nice. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. So this last week, we have been talking on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter about if you could design your perfect genealogy space, what it would it look like. And if you guys want to share what things would be your um, favorite genealogy space. One person said lots of coffee. I don't care what it is, but lots of coffee. Now, I don't drink coffees, but I would say lots of hot chocolate or money for milkshakes. <laughs> Get the milkshake machine and. <laughs> Pretty much. Or lemonade. <laughs> but see, the best lemonade's over at Chick fil A, and I don't want to go over there that often. But anyway, so this little bookcase represents my dream i have um so many shelves of family stories on that bookcase and i would love to have several more shelves of family stories that either other people have written or that i have written myself and just fill that whole bookcase of stories so um 
For those of you who've never been to our live streams, I am very passionate about writing family histories. So I've created scrapbooks, which are really easy because the stories are really short. And then I have published um, family histories of individual ancestors. Rather, I don't dream of making the big anthology book. It just, because I have one and it's boring, it's all get out. I want to have stories that we can can share. And so that, that's my ideal genealogy space. So it's in progress. I, I need I need to write more, but. So we have a question from Kirsten. She's asking us, do you live near the burning chemical plant? Now, the latest one that I've heard of, I say the latest one because it happens all the time. <laughs> Aren't they um, always, don't they always have fires coming out? Well, that's the, that's the stack because oh, they're, okay. they're actually burning stuff. But this is one that like had an explosion. It's on fire. Um, uh -huh. We live, so we live in out, just outside of Houston. We live on the north east mm -hmm. corner of Houston, mm -hmm. which is north of where all the refineries and chemical plants are. Mm -hmm. um, although really the whole coast, the whole Gulf Coast of Texas is mm -hmm. full of refineries and chemical plants. So we aren't anywhere near it where mm -hmm. we can smell it. Now, because Houston is so flat, when I'm at work on the sixth floor, I can see it. <laughs> And so we know whenever there's a refinery fire or something like that, because we can see it because this place is so flat, mm -hmm. but um, we don't smell it or anything or, or mm -hmm. have anything here, smoke or anything like that. Yeah. Now, Maria said homeschools are not allowed in Sweden. Now, I think I remember that to be the case in Nordic countries simply because, or I'm going to get in trouble. What? Scandinavian, Nordic, Nordic. This Sweden. Okay. Sweden and its neighbors. There you go. They're really, you guys really do have a fantastic education system that focuses on education um, and didn't fill it with too much fluff. And so I can see if we lived in Sweden, my kids would probably be going to the schools there. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's this next picture? Okay. So the next picture is what he's been doing. So Andy loves to talk DNA. Um, he's very, very good at it. But the other thing he does, he's a tinkerer. So when I first married him, he said, I want to install an attic to the girl, the, an attic ladder in our ceiling. And I'm like, what? So I, my dad, he would do home repair jobs and you'd have to hire somebody to fix his repair jobs. So I'm thinking, no, no. She thought she married her dad. I, well, in that regard. Anyway, so he goes and installs this ladder into the attic. And from our 20, throughout our 20 years of marriage, he has to have something to fix. He just has to have something to fix. If he doesn't have anything to fix, it's almost like we need to move again or he invents random things. I'm like, why are you doing this? But when we first moved here, the carpet was disgusting. Oh my gosh. I really, really wanted to replace the carpet when we first moved in here, but he said no. Yeah, that's right, because we still had little kids. And so if we replaced it with new carpet, they're just going to destroy that. Mm -hmm. And if we replace it with something nice, they're going to destroy that, and we're going to have to replace it again. Okay, so our youngest is, he's elementary school age, middle to upper elementary school age, and um, typically doesn't destroy stuff. So it was time, he said, you can have, what are my choices? I can't remember. You can have a shed in the backyard, you can have extended patio in the backyard, or you can have a wood floor. I chose the wood floor. So this is the before, and now we have an after. He finished it just yesterday. Actually, this, just this morning, I put the last pieces of trim on. Technically, I haven't glued down all the trim pieces, so. It's done enough. It's done enough. But now, do you, do, do, have any of you heard of the story, if you give a mouse a cookie and he wants he wants something else, you got to have milk to go with it and then he needs a napkin. Now that I have a beautiful new floor, I need curtains and cushions and new furniture and new rugs. <laughs> it just started this whole thing. But I'm not really good at decorating, so I don't know how I'm going to pull that off. But it's so lovely. I want the living room to look as nice now that we go to the floor to go with it. So. She was like lounging on the couch yesterday. <laughs> and she's like, I like my room. It's the cleanest room in the house right now. <laughs> yeah. So in a week, it'll be destroyed. But uh, hey, that's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. All right. Patricia still wants you to yes. go visit. <laughs> you got to pay her for me to do work. And I'm not sure you want her rates. 
Mm-mm-mm. Okay. So um, some other things we've been doing behind the scenes, just so you know, it's a number of you have been asking for Family History Fanatics gear. And um, so I found out it was a whole lot easier than I thought to set up a little shop over on Teespring. So I put together, um, right now, we're just starting with our logo. Um, so we have t-shirts for, uh, we, we chose the comfort fit t-shirts, kind of, well, this is a polo, but the comfort fitted t-shirts, I don't like those big boxy man things. Um, so we have a female shirt, a male shirt, a mug, a phone cover, and a tote bag. Um, and it has our logo on now. And so we also have these random phrases that we might also throw on t-shirts in the future too. So if you would like to go um, swag out yourself for Christmas, the shop's available there. We also try to make it so that it's relatively affordable. Um, so it's a lot of shirts, people are charging like $25.99 or $30 for their logo shirts. I'm like, dude, a shirt's 20 bucks. I'll buy a $20 t-shirt. So if, I, if I'm gonna do that for myself, that's what I'm gonna do for you. So our, our shirts are uh, under what the suggested retail price was. So I hope you'll go and grab some of those. And when we're at a conference, we can take pictures together. Or if you're like Patricia and you wanna grab any of those things, yes, hint, hint, Patricia. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you wanna take pictures of, of your mug or your phone case or your shirt and send it in to us while you're watching our live streams, that would just be so awesome. <laughs> so Starling's got a question here. This mm -hmm. is a great question. Um, I don't have any children, so I'm trying to convince one of my cousins to carry on my research. Uh -huh. Any recommendations? The family loves hearing about my research. Okay, so I heard a key word. Did you hear it? Loves. No, oh. the next one. Hearing. Hearing. Hearing about your research. So the very first thing to get your people, your family excited, because I've done this with my cousins. I don't have money, I have a few. I have cousins and they have not liked my research when I share it with them, but they love the stories that I share with them. And so again, you, um, you saw that picture with the library of books. So my cousins that I've been working on for 20 years, they have totally gotten hooked on the story. So take the stories that you're sharing, because you said hearing about my research and turn it into written projects. So you can do little scrapbooks and the scrapbooks don't have to be fancy unless you have a fancy bone in your body. Um, they can just be pictures with a story and you can make it over on mixbook.com or shutterfly.com. Um, or you can write an actual book that's a story that's less pictures but includes the documentation. Because people are, when I wrote my book, they're like, I've never seen these pictures before. I've never seen these documents before. And oh, I remember that story. That's what you want. So that's the first thing is turn things into stories. And the second thing is if you don't have anybody ready to take on your research now, donate them to a genealogy society, a family history library, something like that, and get it donated so that when your ancestors are ready or your relatives are ready, it's in a safe, secure place and not burned up in a family fire. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that. Oh, no. Not personally. I had some cousins that were going to give me some family history, and then they had a fire in that house. All right. So we... Great question. Yeah. We have today's oh. top... Oh. Stacy, there will be kid sizes, and send me an email and tell me, tell me what colors you think would look good, and I will put that in our store. There will be kid sizes. I didn't know if anybody wanted to put it on kids, so well, I didn't add that yet. Patricia says long sleeves also. Okay, I can <laughs> add a long sleeve shirt too. <laughs> Sounds good. They had hoodies and all kinds of stuff. I just didn't know what you guys would want, so I'm on it. No, all right. So today's topic is uh, the series that we actually just started yesterday. Well, this is another part of our today. Oh, we didn't show the office. We forgot to show the office. Oh, okay. Or behind the scenes. Well, let me get it set up so I can Cheese show it. you. Okay. Teasing. <laughs> Some people wanted to know where the magic happens here in the office. And uh, we're going to do our best. <laughs> okay. Okay. Pink. So, right here. This is where it, this is where it happens. Um, it's green. You got to talk because I'm going to go move. All right. Camera. So, um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you about. So, this is a green screen. So, Andy is the technology brain behind this outfit. I just was going to have a camera and we were just going to, you know, 
talk to you sitting on my couch. And then he's like, no, let's do all these cool things. So we got slides. So this is the green screen. It's a big old sheet that covers the entire wall here. And then if you go this way, can you go that way? All right, so we've got our lives, our lights, and then we have our computer system. And we have two monitors, woo! And he's breaking things. I just knocked over a light. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have our dual monitors and our messy desk. Everything's just messy and cramped in here. So, you know what, my genealogy might be organized, but our desk is not. Yeah, see, you can see the total mess of just everything all over the place here. Mm -hmm. And yet it looks like, hey, they're somewhat put together. All right, now turn around. This is the other reason, Rye. So we're actually in um, Andy's parents' bedroom. So they go on mission trips and they go on trips to do service around the country. And um, in between those trips and those service opportunities, they live with us. And so we take over their room but they're coming back in January and we have to find a new place for a studio. So I don't know what we're going to do, but there's not a lot of space as you can see where the magic happens here in our office, but there you go. That's what it looks like. Okay. <laughs> where is Caleb? Oh, that's a really great question. So Caleb ha has a full-time job that actually pays him. We don't pay him anything. Um, except for experience and rent and food, um, or shelter and food. Anyway, so he is off at his job right now. But um, you go ahead and fix the thing. I'm gonna go get the other monkeys. The other things, the other folks behind Family History Fanatics are our kids. Yeah. So hold on one second, and let me get our okay, background back. Slowly. Maybe. Do not say your name. And let me get name. the. Bye. This is always fun trying to remember where everything is at. There we go. And I think we're back almost now. Okay. So we got the young one first. So this is the youngest of the fanatic kiddos. Say hi. Hi. And we call him Cinco because we live in the South. We live in Texas. We're Tex-Mex and so his name is Cinco. <laughs> so what are you doing right nope. now? I'll but what are what? you doing? What are you up to right now? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I'm useless. <laughs> come over here and stand. Come over here and stand. All right, there. come here. And so, um, Patricia says this is my mini me. And yeah, this is Quattro. She's number four. And what's your favorite thing to do in family history? Um, doing the later. Scheduling. Oh yes, so she it's she helps in the business by scheduling a lot of our social media posts, our old content to Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. She does that for for me. Yep. But when you do family history, she has been doing indexing since mm -hmm. she was eight, and she's much older than eight now, and she really <laughs> likes doing that. Mm-hmm. I don't like doing it because I'm behind. <laughs> All right. So this is. <clears throat> This is serious guy. This is number three. How You're are you? half in, half out. He's half in, half out. Oh. You have to squish. There. Oh, wait, mom, couldn't he? Shh. Now, what do you like to do in family history? Money. Money. <laughs> yes. So, tell me you say, how do you get your youth interested in doing family history? <clears throat> and he says, I'll do it if you pay me. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things we do is we participate in genealogy uh, competitions for kids. And uh, he can't participate it every year because you can only win one year. So he has to wait until he gets to the next age group and then he can participate there. Wow. So honestly, if we had more competitions for kids, maybe some of them eventually that pays. So if you are part of a local genealogy oh, society, gosh, we would suggest gosh. that or a state society, that would be one way to use, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars of your budget each year is to have a family history writing contest for mm -hmm. young kids. Yeah. Yep. All right. And then this is the oldest and greatest. She's the one that ruined uh, her dad's graduation day. <laughs> 
she likes to do Bambi's makeup. So whenever you see Bambi, it's typically her unless she's at work. So, And she's also the driver. She drives to kids' places when we need them out of the house to be quiet. Yep. Yeah. And what do you like to do with Bambi history? Indexing. And she likes to do indexing. So that's how you can get your kids involved in family history. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. What? Glacier she said. Youngins are born hardwired. No. Uh, that one. He's showing off his Aggie shirt. Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought you guys might like to see the kids behind the camera. You, know, you got to um, over to me. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So Caleb is the one that likes to be on camera. He does more research and really cool stuff like that. Um, he also does a lot of the video editing. We're going to be training our kiddos to do more activities as they get older. But the oldest one is hopefully going to be graduating and moving on her adult life. Yay! This May. I'm really sad. <laughs> <laughs> so we started yesterday 28 days of family history. And so starting yesterday all the way through At till, 2 o'clock. Till Christmas. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. There's 28 days. And mm -hmm. we are releasing a video every single day. Now today's video is the live stream. This one. Hi. This one. Mm -hmm. um, but all the other videos, um, except for the live stream in two weeks, are going to be on there. Mm -hmm. So... At 2 o'clock on all of them? They will be released at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is GMT minus 6. Greenwich time minus Something 6. like Sweden time minus 6. Or Sweden time minus 7. I can't remember for sure. It's minus 6. GMT <laughs> my, I looked but it I up. But I don't know if Sweden time is on GMT or but not. But I was told... Okay, so we're having this... Not really arguing. But see, this is behind the scenes. This is what we do, right? <laughs> Typically, we cut, edit that out, you know? But, um, so I was told that international, if I tell you GMT plus or minus, that international folks will know which way, what time it is based on that. But we're supposed to base everything off of Sweden time. Are we? Yeah. Okay. Because we got Swedish people. What about the Auss Aussies? Now They're you're like kicking them the out next of the day. Oh. When we have more Aussie viewers than Swedish viewers. Actually, it's pretty interesting. I did an analysis of our viewership based on the populations. Uh, we'll do a video at some point. Pretty surprising. Ah, I'm sorry. I had to, you keep hitting something, so I was adjusting it. Oh, okay. So if you got feedback, then I'm sorry. All right, Sweden winter GMT plus one. So see, six plus one is seven. So we just do, yeah. All right, GMT so plus each seven, video six, comes out at Sweden two o'clock. Now, we're gonna give you a little sampling. Go ahead and hit the next slide. We're gonna give you a brief overview. So there are going to be informative videos. So um, Caleb had one that came out yesterday um, and they're based on your questions. We absolutely love when you give us questions. Um, so one viewer gave us a question, hey, I wanna upload a pension file that has 40 pictures because it's 40 pages and they have 40 pictures. How can I upload it to Family Search? Well, that's what his video is. It's a multi-photo or multi-page document that you want to upload so he gives you a couple strategies a real cool tool that i didn't even know existed as well as some other um cool t t techniques i can't talk this is another reason why we edit heavily our videos um and so then you're going to see some other things we're going to actually give you some practical tips but for people like pam and chris and some of our other loyal fans we have some ridiculous content as well. It is totally designed to make you laugh. And sometimes, like with Bill's one, it's all in a book, designed to share with family members or people who come into genealogy archives and libraries and you just know them. You can just tell them to go watch a video. <laughs> <laughs> They're purely designed for genealogy humor and hope you enjoy that. So for 28 days, you can be able to get it. Um, there's a playlist. Oh shoot, I forgot to give you the playlist. If you go to our YouTube channel, you'll see them coming up for um, 28 days, but there's also will be the hashtag, hashtag, get ready to type. Okay. Hashtag Q8 days genealogy. And then if you search that hashtag, you'll be able to find um, the post on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and then also on YouTube. Use, use that hashtag anytime. It'll help you find the videos very quickly. And if you like it, just share the hashtag 28 days. We'd love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And keep your questions coming in. We're going to have an open Q&A a little bit later. So start dropping any types of questions. It's kind of an ask us anything segment today. Um, but we just wanted to let you know what's going on in Family History Fanatics as we wrap up 2020.
Mm-hmm. 19. 2019. 20. We're just about to start 2020. <laughs> yes. All right. So here is a special. This is like the sneak peek preview. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so as some of you know, we are published authors. We currently have seven books on the market. Anyway, so we have uh, hard copies in our possession that we'd love to sign and send to you. And so we have a holiday book bundle. Now in this holiday book bundle that you can go ahead and drop the link. Um, in the holiday book bundle, you get one book that you will definitely want to implement in 2020. And that is downsizing with family history in the mind. And that is preparing, like earlier, the question about what do I do with my genealogy? You want to start thinking long term, what are you going to do with your genealogy? And this book helps you if you're going to downsize in a week, a month, a year, or just to be prepared because you never know. And then in addition to that, then you get two books of your choice from the titles that we have written. And it will be a $25 value. Typically, it's $33.50 US dollars. And it will, that the tax is included, right? Yes. The tax is included. The U.S. will be free shipping international. We got you the cheapest rate we can find. That's right. U.S. like raised their shipping rates in the last six months. So it's gotten really expensive to ship internationally. I know. I'm sorry, guys. I really wish we could handle that. But our deals and like the books are pretty pretty cheap for you. Yeah. So they, um, the sale runs until December 13th, Friday the 13th, <laughs> to make it easy to remember. And if you order before December 5th, then I'll throw in a free, a free bonus ebook. That's right. So it's twenty five dollars for three books, mm-hmm. and that's just good on our website. I put the link there, mm-hmm. um, so you can click on that now. Now we're not going to actually start advertising that until Monday, mm-hmm. but it is live right now. So if any of our viewers are watching this and mm-hmm. you want to go there yep. and order, you certainly can. Absolutely, absolutely. And we will ship out. I am so that you get those by Christmas. I, I hope we can't promise international because so, yeah, they get slow. That's true. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so if you want to get them for yourself or as a gift for somebody mm-hmm. else, they're available there for you. Yeah, so one book is it's guaranteed the downsizing, and then you get to pick the, ch- the choice of two. And if you want two of the same book, that's totally fine as two. You get that option. All right. Okay, I think that's all of those type of things. Now it's time for open Q&A. Any, ask us anything. You can ask us behind the scene questions. There was a DNA question or two. Now it's time is yours. Oh, Andy's right. trying so, to switch things I'm up a little bit. I'm switching things there. So we are out of focus. Okay, the camera's out of focus. I can't change that. You can't change that right now because you moved it around. I, huh? Right, I moved it around. Well, if Sorry. you switch to that other screen, we're small enough that it won't matter so much. Probably. No, because no, they were, were looking at that screen. Ah. So I just switched to this. All right. So let me go through. There was some questions back here. Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> That's one of the prices of being um, just a two-man operation. Let's see here. <clears throat> All right, so Noberto earlier, he had a question. Is Arctic DNA from the Viking Age? Um, I'm not sure. The Arctic DNA, what they're talking about, whether they're talking about the um, Northern Europe, or if they're talking about just the northern hemisphere, which would include the Siberian and the North America, um, Native Americans from there. Uh, so it really depends on the company and how they define it. And for that, you'd really just have to look into their populations and see, okay, what population do they consider this Arctic DNA? And that's the really confusing thing about, about comparing these is each company calls things different things. Mm-hmm. They're not always intuitive. Right. And sometimes they call different things the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so the moral of the story is don't get your DNA percentage as a tattoo because it could be changing. Yeah, whatever you do, <laughs> don't don't tattoo that on you. Um, if you do, make sure it's a uh, wash-offable tattoo. All right. Hail in Place asks, do you have Mormon heritage? Yes. Um, and no. Yes and no. <laughs> um, so I do have one of my grandparents' family lines goes back to the uh, Mormons who crossed the plains from Illinois to Utah. And then I have another of my grandparents that their lines go back to um, those that uh, came over in the 1870s, 1880s as part of the Perpetual Emigration Program. Um, 
So that's that's the tie that I have with with Mormon heritage. Devin does not have any. I don't. However, there was a mystery because what was the there was an Emma Smith hymn book from eighteen the second one she put out, right? Yeah, the eighteen forties. And then a doctrine of. Uh, there was another scripture book that came into my possession through my mom and I don't know where she got it because by the time I finally asked about it she was deceased and I don't know how it got into our family so so far as I can tell um we don't have Mormon heritage on my side yeah um, Adam asks, for deep analysis of the Y chromosome, is it better to get a big Y or a WGS by Dante, in your opinion? Ugh, I don't know. I've never done much deep analysis on the Y because I've not had a, a mystery that I've really needed to use Y DNA for. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you that know about my, my paternal great, 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 great grandfather who changed his name from Garnett to Lee, we actually found that through autosomal DNA because it was through his sister mm-hmm. that we had matching relatives. So he didn't have any brothers that uh, we would have been able to have matching relatives, but from his sister we found matching relatives and that's how we solved that. Mm-hmm. So I have not gotten into um, very deep into Y DNA testing, so I really couldn't give you a good opinion on that. All right, so Anna and uh, Kirsten want to know about my Swedish ancestor. Okay, this is so Anderson, William Anderson, right? Yes, this is William Anderson, and this is what I know, and this is why it's very, next to impossible to research for him. I have evidence of him on my grandmother's biological mother's death certificate that was signed by the hospital. Did you see where I'm going? So it was like fourth, fourth hand information. Okay, so. Um, on it, that death certificate, it was the informant to the hospital was also um, named, which is kind of a, a genealogy tip is look to see if you're looking at the all of the copies of a death certificate or a birth certificate, because there's actually two copies of this death certificate. And on the second one, it said that Agnes, her name is Agnes, um, it was the informant to the hospital was her uncle. So her uncle knew that William Anderson was from Sweden and her mother, Amanda Smarks, was from Licking County, Ohio. And I'm finally starting to say it right, even though it just feels so wrong to say Licking, Ohio. Anyway, so that's my first record that I have for William, the only time he's named. So then I look for census records because Agnes was born in 1881. Um, I look in census records and I find him with three other Swedes and I can't pronounce their names or remember them right off the top of my head. And they're living at some guy's house. It's kind of like a boarding house or something in Howard County, Missouri. Now, Howard County, Missouri does not have available marriage certificates. It doesn't have um, birth certificates for Agnes. And I cannot find death certificates for William or his wife, um, Amanda, now Anderson. The only time I see Agnes show up is when she moved back to Ohio by 1900. So I, I, that's all I know. That is all I know about my Swede ancestry. And I do have, um, you know, an ethnicity percentage, although you say the ethnicity percentages aren't, don't matter so much, but it does show a little bit of Swede DNA in, in me and my brother, but that's all we know. I wish I could tell you more. <laughs> I've, I've searched because you should search the fan club. So I searched for the other three gentlemen in the household. I, you know, maybe I should just send it to you guys and you could look at those names. Maybe they spelled it wrong and that's why I can't find those men. See, you know, what happened. William Anderson sounds like a pretty popular name though. Yes, but I think it was like, forgive me. I think it's like Canute with some other kind of weird spelling of a last name that it for an American, it's not common like Anderson. Oh, okay. But it probably gives me some clues or they butchered it when they spelled it. You know, us English, you know, Americans don't know how to spell <laughs> foreign names very well. Um, and then there was a second person who had another, like, it wasn't, it wasn't as common as William Anderson. So I tried to search for them and I just keep coming up blank. Mm-hmm. So someday I should probably just post... You know, here's my three Swedes in 1880. Anybody help me figure out anything else about these three guys? Because they could be connected somehow or totally three strangers living in the house. So Jackie had one suggestion that we were talking and she'd put on there that I think is important for the holidays just to bring up again. 
is she says remind people to take pictures and share with their family or save it online. Yes. This is a great time if you go to visit family at the holidays mm -hmm. to one, take pictures of different family mementos, take pictures of your family members of mm -hmm. their homes. And like I said, we do the the picture of the live stream, mm -hmm. our background. We just started that a few uh, weeks ago. Um, we're more than happy to showcase, you know, something from, from your family, whether it's That's recent it. or old. Right. Either one. Absolutely. But um, getting together with family is a great time to start preserving some of that family history. And get, get out the artifacts and things. That's the one thing that I heard a lot when I went to visit my ancestors. They would pull out the family Bible or they'd pull out some old photos and they go, oh, I forgot about that story. So take a picture, um, use your camera and record people doing the, the of audio recording of the stories that they share. You can transcribe that and type it up later and ask more questions and filler details later. Don't go to fam, you know, the holidays and just ask for names and dates. Go and get those stories because within them you'll find the names and dates that you need. Great right. tip. So Barb's got a question on census records. Yes. On certain people, what does the additional remarks refer to? I have found it corresponds to naturalization records, but not always. Okay, so here's the problem. <laughs> Genealogy is about time and place, so I'm not sure which census record. It could be UK, it could be Canadian, it could be Mexico, it could be German, it could be the United States. Then the next thing you need to know is the time. Is it 1790? Is it 1840? Is it you know, the time? And once you know those two things, then we can start looking for more details. Additional marks, it all depends on the actual census. Now sometimes, like in the 1940, a random selection of people were asked additional questions and sometimes those question answers are at the foot, uh, the footer section of the census record. Sometimes there's ex extra schedules and sometimes it's at the end of this section. There's a lot of things, so it always depends on the where, the when, and what was the instructions given to the person creating that census record. So I can't give a specific answer without more details. And I would say it also depends on the person that was actually taking that census. Mm -hmm. So while they were given certain instructions, <laughs> if you've gone through lots of census records, you probably see that most people followed those instructions. But there's some group of people who didn't always follow those instructions, or at least not all of the instructions. Mm -hmm. And some of them had their own little note-taking way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you had the people who were tallying the census that would use different columns and add numbers in different ways. And there was a official way to do it. And most of the records follow that, but not all of them. Um, right. So that's really something that's on a case by case basis mm -hmm. that if you would like, Barb, if you want to actually send Devin some examples of things that you've found, yeah. that would be a, a good class to do Absolutely. on uh, on your new um, monthly classes that you're doing on Facebook. That'd be great. That would be great. I would enjoy that. Mm -hmm. All right, so Val has a question about the best software for genealogy. Okay. Is Family Tree Maker okay? <sighs> okay, here's the problem. It is important to... Everything's got a problem. It does have a problem. There's no easy answer. There's a couple of things. Well, I'm going to tell you one answer that's totally easy. I'm going to adjust thankfully... my chair just so you know. Okay. I'm like way shorter than you all of a sudden. <laughs> if you are using personal ancestral file please upgrade to another genealogy software. That's the easiest answer I can give you. Now, what is the best software? So I'm guessing organizing, tracking, and analyzing your data. There are three that are the most commonly recommended. There are Legacy, there's Roots Magic, and there's Family Tree Maker. And the answer depends on what you want to accomplish, what user interface makes sense to you, and when you can get a hold of a copy, and that's why I have the big side, because I'm still waiting on my copy of Family Tree Maker. Mm -hmm. It's been out for a few months. I'm not going to say anything. So I'm going to judgment on whether it's good or not. I think it it's functional. It can do a lot of the things you may want to do. Um, if your primary tree is Ancestry, Family Tree Maker might be the best fit for you. If you've used Family Tree Maker before, stick with what you know. Um, if you primarily use family search for your tree and you came up from personal ancestral file, Roots Magic I think is a closer fit. Um, but I'm still waiting on Roots Magic 8. <laughs> it's not ready yet. So I wish I could give you a good answer. They typically 
all have a free version that you can try. So try the, the different free ver or le uh, lower cost versions. Find the one that makes uh, the most sense to you and that's gonna be the best one for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, now Angie also says Brothers Keeper. Have you heard of that one? I haven't. I, I, you know, there's a couple of people who've, well, let me rephrase that. I haven't ta heard it talked in most genealogy circles. It's usually been a few here or there. So I, I can't give a recommendation on it. I haven't heard it as often as Family Tree Maker, Roots, Magic, Legacy Tree. There's also one that um, tends to be in professional genealogy circles. And there's one that I know is uh, heavily promoted by folks from the UK. And I haven't worked with those two too much because they don't fit my needs. All right. So just so you know, uh, we might have just cut out briefly. Uh -huh. There was something on YouTube going weird because it was saying all of a sudden that, hey, they weren't receiving anything, but I'm looking at the stream now and it looks like the stream is going. So, um, yeah, sorry about that, folks. I wish I knew what happened and mm -hmm. what to do there. Okay, okay. so uh, Anna and um, Kirsten said, yes, send them the information. So, all right. Anna and Kirsten, if you could just send us your email at mm -hmm. info at familyhistoryfanatics.com then Devin will get in contact sure. with you and send you some information and see what you guys can find on your end. Yes. Because that'll be a, a nice mystery of, hey, here's somebody that mm -hmm. you don't know, good practice of your skills, and right. maybe there is some uh, some hidden information out there about That'd be great. Somebody Absolutely. Knows. Absolutely. And that's the one thing I really like about genealogy. Um, there's a big debate. Keep your trees private. Have them sh publicly shared. Shared. And I, I just share just about everything. So all I really need to do is give them a link as to where William is um, on my two trees and they can have at it. Um, so I'm an advocate of sharing because, you know, some people just like to, they can, they have different knowledge and collaborating is always a very good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's about time for us to end. It mm -hmm. is uh, noon our time. Yeah. So. We hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes and ask us anything and hope you'll support us in any of the avenues that we provide for you. Um, don't like to do a hard sales pitch, but anytime you watch a video all the way to the end and then watch an ad every now and then, we get money and then we make more videos and it's very helpful. Or if you support us by attending any of our workshops or buying our books or now our merchandise, all of that can go in helping us to um, support our family and bring you the content that you need, want, and desire. So we hope that 2020 will be awesome for you. We hope you'll, under you'll enjoy the 28 days of genealogy learning and laughter <laughs> and um, share share our content. If you find us valuable, the best thing you could do for us is to share our videos like um, Patricia and Chris do. They're always sharing our content with others. So um, anything else? Uh, next live stream is gonna be December 13th. So that's yeah. two weeks from today. It's gonna and be Dana Leeds. We have Dana Leeds. She's gonna be talking about um, color clustering. Yay. And with that, we will see you all next time. Bye guys. Bye-bye.